thank God for this evening. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for all that he's done for each and every one of us and for our community. Lord, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Miss Becky, roll call. Mr. Ross Burgord? Here. Miss Rachel Allender? Mr. Robbie Liner? Here. Mr. Clarence McGuire? Here. Mr. Jan Rogers? Here. Mr. Travion Smith? Here. Mr. Barry Soudier? Here. Mr. Wayne Thibodeau? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Becky. Uh, conflict disclosure. I remind the commissioners that at any time tonight, a conflict of interest exists, arises, or to recognize as to any issue during this meeting, he or she should immediately disclose it and to recuse himself or herself from participating in a debate, discussion, and voting on this matter. Does any member have anything to disclose at this time? Okay. Uh, D, approval of, the, approval of the minutes of the Zoning and Land Use Commission of the regular meeting of November 16th, 2023. So move, Mr. Chair. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Communications. None, sir. All right. F, new business. Uh, planned building group, Cypress Court Duplex, 6283 Alma Street. Cypress Court Apartments, Mr. James Kentrell. Someone's representing them. Name and address, sir. Good evening, Brandon Arsenal of Total Project Services, 294 Meadowview Court, Thibodeau, Louisiana. I'm representing a landowner here, uh, Cypress Court Apartments, and Mr. James Cantrell is their uh, manager here. He's here as well. Um, what we have before you is a, it's already a standalone track of land that's sitting in any redivision or anything like that. Um, it's a 0.991 acre track of land near the intersection of Westside Boulevard in Alma. So if you turn on Canadas, go down Westside, two stop signs down, you hit Alma. You turn left, there was a convenience store on a corner, and then there's an open little track on your right-hand side um, just before you get to Magnolia Courtyard. So that kind of lays the land of where we at right there. Um, this, this track of lands in zone R3, uh, the applicant would like to propose and add some duplex units right there, single family, single story units. Um, looks like we're gonna have five duplexes or 10 units, space about 16 feet apart. Each unit would be 70 by 43 is what we're looking at right now. And when I say unit, the building, the duplex as well. So okay. it's right about 1500 square foot per unit. Um, we propose and we know we got to handle drainage. There's a large drainage outfall ditch on the common, on the southern common property line. Uh, there's a fire hydrant, fire protection, about 200 feet going towards Alma on the next lot corner uh, from this property. Uh, we're going to have a driveway going down to the back, provide an adequate parking, two parking stalls for each unit. Um, they said it's just a driveway going to the back. It's not public engineer turnover to the parish for operation and maintenance or anything like that. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we meet all the setback requirements, uh, which is five feet on the side. We're proposing to be some 10 feet, 30 feet in the rear, 25 feet up front, and uh, five feet on the other side. But we have a driveway um, there, so plenty, plenty far enough off that property line. So. Okay. Um, being that there's no other comments, we'd be seeking approval of this application. You got it. I'll just open it up to the public. Just real quick, anybody from the public want to speak on this? No one? Okay. Administration. No, uh, it's, it's... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just so you know, um, I think Becky's working on getting the site plan uploaded and onto the screen, but it is in your packets um, and on your iPads and so forth. Um, 
but I'll go ahead and jump into the uh, staff report. This is a proposal is placement of five duplexes for a total of 10 units on a single parcel located at 6283 Alma Street in an R3 district. Uh, the property is adjacent to residential townhouse development and an apartment complex. <coughs> The proposed duplex meets most of the requirements of the Chapter 28, Article 5, Section 92 of the Parish Zoning Ordinance as it pertains to drainage. Now, the final drainage plans will be approved as part of the building permit. Uh, vehicular and pedestrian circulation, off-street parking, and building spacing. And I say most uh, because Bayou Kane Fire Department has reviewed the proposed site plan and will require sufficient turnaround at the end of the driveway. The specifications have been sent to the developer to incorporate those into the site plan. Uh, there is sufficient space for a play area. There, there you go. In the rear yard, provided, uh, provided that the fire. I'm sorry. Provided that the required fire truck turnaround will allow for it, or the play area could be relocated to another suitable and safe location on site. Uh, staff recommends approval on the condition of submittal of an approval letter from Bayou Kane Fire Department. And uh, today there was, um, you know, an email from Chief, uh, Chief Hill at Bayou Kane um, that we forwarded to the uh, developer to, and, and to Brandon um, that had all of the uh, NFPA requirements for the fire truck turnaround. Um, so it's just a matter of incorporating those. I mean, there is sufficient room in that rear yard setback, and they can construct... Uh, the fire truck turnaround within that setback. It's okay. that setback is a building setback. Okay, thank you, administration. Um, any comments from the commissioners? If no comments, looking for a motion. Uh, Mr. Bogart's first. Yes. <clears throat> Can you remind me where that hydrant was uh, in relations to this plan? Now that we're looking at the plan, Do so we have a. Uh, GIS. It's on Alma, huh? Yeah, it, the hydrant would be on Alma, and and I did talk to Chief Hill uh, about that as well. And as far as the hydrant goes, in his correspondence um, to the uh, to us, uh, <clears throat> comment number two, input on fire hydrant locations. He's, uh, Chief Hill states that we will require additional fire hydrants to be placed. I know this is not the phase for that input but I just want it on record that we will require hydrants. So again, like the drainage, the fire hydrants would be part of the building permit process. Got it. Thank uh, you. Now, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you know, subdivision regulations have to do with 250 foot. So yeah, yeah I mean, there, if there's a hydrant right there, which uh, I believe there is one within the 250 foot range, you know, that's, that's not something that the, Planning Commission necessarily would be involved in, but it would be something that fire code and building code would address at the time of the building permit. Thank you. Mr. Thibodeau. No, sir. I'm good. All right. Any other comments or a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as per staff recommendations for this uh, condition of the bike and fire. <clears throat> uh, I second that. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Bogart. All approved aye. 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 All opposed nay. So motion passes. Congratulations. Staff report. No staff report for zoning, sir. Commissioner comments? Yeah, I, I, I have a comment. Mr. Thibodeau? Yeah, and I didn't want to ask it then, but I, I noticed the paperwork says 1.099 acres, and he said something different. He said less than one point. He said 0 0.99 or something of that sort. But the real question I got when I look at the cost how do we, you know, I think ours was $25 per permit per acre. How does that stack up with places like Lafayette or, or, or other, other areas in terms of our cost? Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd have to check into that. Um, I mean, approximate cost of the work involved, they have listed at $2.3 million. I think he's talking about the application yeah. fee. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That it's $25 per acre. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, and, and I only ask that. Uh, obviously, we spend a, we the parish spend a lot of resources on these projects, and and I, I know the cost of the project. Does does that also drive, uh, I guess, something to Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government? And if not, if just 
the permitting cost. And I, I know we spent a lot more money than, than that. And I don't know that we should be recovering our total cost, but when you look at the resources the parish send on these projects, including engineering, it just seems like a paltry sum. And I, I would I would ask to see how our counterparts are, are charging out on these, these costs and maybe let us know at a later date. Definitely. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments, commissioners? Public comments for the zoning? I need a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. That was from last month. Oh. Just wherever. That's my reimbursement for Corian's charge. He didn't turn it back in. Thank you. I got an issue too because I didn't no, either. No, we just need one initial. Okay. The secretary Treasurer. Got it. That one is, we didn't get to it yet. That's on. Uh, yeah, we all right. <coughs> you want to pray this time? Anybody else? All right, we're going to convene as the uh, Regional Planning Commission now. Uh, once again, we will let uh, Mr. Thibodeau have the prayer and um, Mr. Smith will have the pledge. Dear Lord, we thank you again for your grace. We thank you again for your mercy. And Lord, as we deliberate tonight, our last meeting of 2023, in a season that recognized all things related to you, we thank you for yes. all that you've given us. We thank you for the parish, our state, and our nation. We thank you for the members in their service here. Yes. We ask that you continue to bless our deliberations and our decisions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Miss Becky, roll call. Mr. Burgord? Here. Miss Ellender? Mr. Liner? Here. Mr. McGuire? Here. Mr. Rogers? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Soudier? Mr. Thibodeau, Present. we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Becky. Uh, conflict disclosure. I reminded to the commissioners that any time tonight a conflict of interest exists, arises, or is recognized as to any issue during this meeting, he or she should immediately disclose it and to recuse himself or herself from participating in debate, discussion, and voting on this matter. Does any member have anything to disclose at this time? Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes of the HOMA. Terrebonne Regional Planning Commission minutes for a regular meeting November 16, 2023. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Smith. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, I mean, all, yeah, all opposed, nay. Motion passes, E. Yes, I move to approve the remittance of payments for the December 21st, 2023 invoices and the treasurer's report of November 2023. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. A second. A second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. Aye. And all opposed, nay. So motion passes. And I'll also make a motion to accept and approve the proposed 2024 budget. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. I'll second that. A uh, second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Okay, now we're going to do our annual uh, organizational meeting. Uh, approval of proposed for the uh, 2023 audit. I need a motion for that. I have a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. A second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Election of the officers. I need nominations. I nominate Mr. Liner, 
Or champ? Wait, did you do the audit? Yes. yes. I have a nomination for Mr. Liner for chairman. I second that. I have a second. Uh, Who's to close nominations for officer chairman? Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Bogart. Yep. All approved, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Thank you. I need a, a motion to close the nomination. Yep. Yes. Okay, now we need a motion to approve that nomination. Okay. I need a motion to approve that nomination. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. I'll do a second. A second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. So motion passes. So we're going to have to do this uh, every time. So now I need a motion for uh, vice chair. I open up a motion for vice chair for Mr. Rogers. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers for I'm vice. Lost. I'm sorry. I have a mo elect. motion by Mr. Bogard. To elect Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir. I have a motion by Mr. Bogard. Looking for a second. I have a second by Mr. McGuire. All approved. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Nay. Now I need a motion to. Uh, I make a motion to close those nominations. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Bogard. Second. A second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. And now I need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Rogers as that position. I have a motion by Mr. Bogard. Second, second by Mr. McGuire. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. And now Treasurer. Secretary and Treasurer. I nominate Ross Bogart for Secretary Treasurer. I have a motion by Mr. Bog. I'm sorry. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. I have a. I need a second. Second. A second by Mr. Smith. All approved. Aye. Aye. All, op Aye. all opposed. Nay. So motion passes. And now I need a motion to approve. Close nomination. Close nomination. So move. Move to close nomination. Okay, so I have a motion to close nominations by Mr. Rogers. Second by Mr. Bogart. I'm Mr. McGuire. All approved, aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. And then we got one to approve Mr. Bogart. That's the last one, right? Yeah. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers to, to approve Mr. Bogart, and I need a second. I have a second by Mr. Smith. All approved, aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Thank you. And thank you. That's once a year. That is rough. That is a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Sheesh. All right. I need a motion for take old business. Okay. Let's skip one. Communications. I got it. Communications, you have anything, administration? Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to leave you on the desk. Okay. Um, well, number one, I was just telling BJ that um, even the tree board has trouble with nominations and elections. So, like, you're not alone in that. Every, yeah, that board, was... every board stumbles when it comes time to nominate and elect. You compare this to the yeah. tree board? Yeah. Yes, I am. We, at, we have seven tree board members. And I can't remember the last time we had a full tree board. I'm, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, communications. So yes, I do have a letter uh, from Ken Rembert uh, dated today. Dear Chris, please let this letter serve as a request to leave the above item on the table at tonight's meeting and place it on the agenda for the next meeting. The plans for the proposed dry hydrant plan for this property are incomplete at this time. And this is pertaining to old business item number two, the Eric Newman property. <clears throat> Thank you, administration. Any more communication? Is that it? That is all. Okay. I need a motion to take old business off the table. I move. Can we clarify what we're taking off? There's two items. The first, or the second one just got, uh, table. just table. Just the first table. Yeah. We got page one. one. No, because we already addressed um, H2. I understand, but you still need to either continue the hearing or something. Don't you? Well, we're tailing it. Per as per the developer's request, 
So it's not. It is. It's off. No action required. No action required. No, we should have had a motion. Oh, a motion under communications. In, That's what Mr. Wayne is saying. Still in communications. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We make a motion Before we table for development. There you go, Mr. Wayne. Yeah. Thank still you. Still in communications. Got it. So, all right. So we need a motion per administration recommendation of table. Got it. Per developer. Per the developer's developer. request. So okay. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. A second by Mr. Bogard. All approved. Aye. Any opposed? Nay? Okay. Okay, so now we will only be removing H1. old business item H1. H1. Got it. Two dozen. Now I need a motion to approve of taking old business off the table. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. A second by... Second. I have a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved. Aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Yes, sir. Name and address. David Wade, 7839 Park Avenue, uh, representing the owner for the Evangeline Oaks subdivision. And uh, we're here to uh, request a final approval tonight. Okay. All right. Miss. A final inspection for Evangeline Oaks was held by representatives of the Department of Public Works. The following punch list items remain and need to be addressed. The ditches in the rear of lots block one, lot six to 38 and 53 to 83 need stumps, fallen trees and branches removed. Warranty items from the previous Evangeline subdivision have not been completed. This first subdivision, this applies to dates back to July of 2020. This is for informational purposes. Roads, Rue Jean-Luc, Rue Evangeline, Rue des Affaires, replace cracked curbs and cracked panels. Utility street lights do not have power. And uh, I believe we can, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be pulled off tonight, but I, I think the roads have been completed just for informational purposes. Administration. Well, administration recommends approval on the condition that applicant agrees to meet all the items on the punch list. Okay. We, we would like to just on item number four, is to post a bond for the uh, hooking up the lights. The lights have been installed, and it's just for energy who has been paid by the developer to install the power, and they're out there installing it, but it's not complete yet. So as far as everything else, we will comply with, and most of it has been applied with already, except for uh, the power, because it's beyond our control, and we like to post a bond. There's 31 street lights out there, uh, and we came up with a cost pro proposal or a bond uh, cost of $1,000 per light. It's 31000 with a 25% uh, increase for the 125 for, for posting a bond for the unfinished work. So that's going to be a total of $78,750 to post a bond for that item. On the, I'm sorry, Mr. Waits, the, and, and you're welcome. But the uh, the the dollar amounts on the email that we received was thirty one thousand streetlight completion. Seventy seven fifty is twenty five percent. So the total amount's thirty eight thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. You said seventy seventy thousand seven hundred and fifty. I mean, no, so again, no, 70, you're welcome. My bad. Thirty eight thousand thirty eight thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. My bad. You're welcome. Okay. All right. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah, Christmas come early for David Waits. Okay, any commissioner's comments or a motion? Mr. Thibodeau. Yes, sir. Mr. Waits, just to make sure I understand you, I think there was a little pushback on your part with regards to the stumps and all. That's the off the, that's the, off the item. That's huh? been, been pulled off okay, the list. Okay, okay, good. I just want to make sure. All right, thank you. They are quite this pretty. Is pre, this is post last meeting. Uh, That's all I, asked I took these about a month ago. Though. Thank you, Mr. Thibodeau. Yeah, I think I took it right after the last meeting. Yeah. I make a motion to accept uh, as per staff's recommendation. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Bogart and a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved. Aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. So motion passes.
Congratulations. Thank you. Merry Christmas. You too. Hi, <coughs> yeah. new business. Yeah, roll on. RPA Campus Roads. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I, I didn't hear it get past that point. I'm, I apologize. You okay. Um, Gene Milford with Milford & Associates at uh, 1538 Polk Street here in Homo. Uh, for the RPA Campus Roads, this is the engineering approval. And um, generally speaking, I usually let John read first. Mr. John? The engineering division of the Terrebonne Parish Department of Public Works has reviewed the plans and calculations for the above reference subdivision. The plans and calculations fail to comply with parish ordinances and subdivision regulations in the following areas. Does not conform to the SDDM. Discharge is not limited to 10-year, 24-hour pre-development rate, and there are no calculations showing that there are no adverse impacts. Hydrographs need to be provided. Inlet spacing and gutter calculations need to be provided. Letters and or signed plats need to be provided from the following. Electric utility, pollution control, gas utility, Department of Health and Hospitals for water and sewer, and approval from TPCG utilities for the street lights should be provided. Administration. Staff would recommend approval on the condition that the applicant agree to meet all the items on the punch list. All right, commissioner comments or motion. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve on the condition that the applicant agrees to meet all items on the TPC punch list. And uh, accept the bond. And accept the, no, the bond. The bond. There's no bond. I'm sorry. That's that was a previous item. Yeah. I have a motion uh, by Mr. Rogers. Yep, I'm getting there. Mr. Thibodeau. Yeah, I just wanted to put Mr. Milford <laughs> on the record. Do you agree? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. Little, little. Shuffle there, but uh, yes, we uh, do agree that we're going to resolve or comply all the items in it uh, that's on the punch list for this project. I just wanted, uh, if you have a moment, a little bit about about the project. Sure. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the RPA project. Um, this is the uh, remotely piloted aircraft for the unmanned aerial service complex that the airport commission has been working on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Uh, part of these roads, uh, part of Thunderbird Road, as well as Blue Angel Road, that's the boulevard that's coming off the highway, that was built under a previous planning commission. Um, this is a continuation of it. We did not bring those roads for final uh, back then because partly, me, mainly because they are still gated off. This is the, the for security of the airport. When people, you know, come off the road and they can well on their way away and easily get onto the taxiway and be out in the middle of the the uh, runways and use it for a drag strip right when aircraft come in and landing. So it's it's been gated off. And there's an, uh, the, another project the airport commission is working on securities and you know, some of the gates and things like that. Um, but this project will will continue Thunderbird Road. So when it's done, we'll have Thunderbird Road connected all the way through, uh, as well as some additional roadways that are coming down. This is the one you see on the on your left hand side as you look at it. That be kind of hook that comes into the um, uh, apron that's already built. Um, I said this is going to be facilitating some additional buildings and things like that are going to come in to really expand what the Homa Terrebonne Airport has, which nowhere else has on the Gulf, entire Gulf Coast. There's a number of MOUs working out with Nichols and Louisiana Tech University and other um, other uh, companies as this project moves forward. And now they're starting to move into the CEAs, the Cooperative Endeavor uh, Agreements, to really step up and move from there. Uh, this really is creating a really fascinating project. It's awesome. Um, like I said, this, this is stuff that we are so far ahead of any other aircraft, uh, airport, um, anywhere in the region. So it, it really kudos goes out to the Airport Commission for all the hard work they've been doing behind the scenes for many, many years. And we've come on board. We've been working on this in 2017. So there's a lot of stuff that's gone into it. There's a lot of neat things that are going to be happening at the airport and uh, really bring in some new business uh, into Terrebonne Parish. So, that's great news, man. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know what's happening. Yeah, can, can, 
Is there? We have too many. Mr. Bogart. Is it open? I have the light. Yeah. I have the light. Right? I, I didn't take it off. Okay. I'm still, I mean, I, unless you took me off, let me know. Is, yeah. is, there, is there a way you to get a tour tour with you or to, to get an up-close look at, at some of the stuff you just explained? I'm, I'm sure there is. Um, you know, right now, it's, it's mainly just some concrete streets and aprons. Okay. Uh, but um, the airport commission, uh, Earl Hicks, he's a, a, the manager. Or either Mert Pellegrin, either one of them would be more than happy okay. uh, to sit down and, and really go into some very good detail and talk about the different types of aircraft, the sea talls, and some of the things that are that are happening there. And this unmanned stuff is going to be professional stuff. I guess drones. Oh yes, sir. Like yes, sir. Okay. You know, they're still working with the FAA, working on a lot of the rules. So a lot of these aircraft are still technically going to be manned, but they'll be done autonomously. And so there's lots of really neat things that are happening. Yeah, um, I had the honor of uh, speaking with Mr. Mert Pellegrin at the Chamber Christmas Luncheon a few days ago, and he gave a great presentation on this. And not only are we talking about unmanned aircraft, completely autonomous, but some of it is manned aircraft, but some of it is hybrid, some of it's fully electric, What's really interesting is that all of this is dovetailing in with Fletcher because not only is Terrebonne becoming the hub for this type of activity, um, but also you, you got to have people to work on this aircraft. So they're creating a whole new industry um, for people to be able to not only pilot, but service this aircraft. And y'all, I mean, the airport, I don't think a lot of people realize, but home of Terrebonne Airport after New Orleans International is the highest rate of, of, of trips per day. Now, when you talk, because of PHI and all the helicopter trips going out of there. Now, fixed wing, it drops down a little bit. I think we might be seventh on the list in the state. But when you talk about just total trips, um, it's second in the state after New Orleans International. If you talk about specifically helicopters, we're number two in the world after Aberdeen, Scotland, which is crazy. Uh, I mean, it's just incredible uh, uh, what's happening out at the airport. And I just don't think the general public realizes it yet. And Mr. Mert, Miss Andrea would be the ones to contact out there to get that tour. And they'd love to talk about it. I wonder if those numbers are new since Fouchon no longer has helicopters going on. Well, they talked about that Tuesday because a lot of the um, uh, helicopter companies are consolidating into the Homa area for a myriad of reasons. But I mean, when you think about that, those guys are bringing in, I mean, their hotel stays, sure. restaurants, you know, all of that stuff that goes along with it. Cause some of those folks are coming in for days or time. And look, it's not just that too. I mean, it's executive travel as well, because they have, uh, they're looking to expand the runway because, of course, the runways were built in the 40s, um, and they were built to accommodate the 20,000-pound aircraft or whatever it is, and now it's, you know, almost 100,000, right? It's just right. huge. But they had a, a plane that flew from Homa to Italy. It took nine hours to get there. They had to take on 5,700 gallons of fuel in Homa, and when I did my e expert Google search on my phone... Jet fuel is six fifty four a gallon. That's like thirty seven thousand dollars that that whoever that was spent on fuel that's on that crazy. one trip. One way, <laughs> one way. Yeah, right. Wow. So you know, that's wow. Rachel might be able to explain a little bit more <laughs> being a United uh, flight attendant now. But uh, right. yeah, I mean that's just it, it's. I think it's great what's happening out at the airport, and I just don't okay. think the people at Terrebonne Parish. Realize it yet. Yet. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Bogart. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Chris basically answered some of that uh, as far as the industry is the benefit from this. Uh, but uh, I guess more specifically, uh, a non-manned uh, vessel, uh, are they targeting certain industries that uh, would be used with these devices, these crafts and stuff uh, to say, is it mostly oil field? Or is that even uh, discussed yet? Me? Um, yes. The, 
there's a lot of different industries and for a lot of different uh, ways that are being done. Of course, that is one, but there are a lot of different things. And, and Mr. Mert Pellegrin, and they can give you a, a good detailed understanding. But yes, sir, it's, it, it covers a lot of different industries. And there's some places that are, have, are working, they're doing autonomous air taxis. I'm going to stop and think about that. You, you can, mm. not here, but that's what some of the things that they're working on. Mm -mm. Not ready okay. yet. Thank you. Pipeline surveys was one Mert talked about. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the there's a lot of levy surveys. You know, there's a lot of uh, uses that they could have out there besides just the oil and gas. It makes yeah. sense. Offshore. It's, yeah, because I know that they have uh, equipment that is more than just visual. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to ride on a on an unmanned aircraft as a passenger. I don't think I'm right. there yet. No. no, me either. I see too many movies. <laughs> Not in this country yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, think about it. I think what George Jetson was supposed to have been born last year. I mean, that's so right. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> that's I'll right. ask Rosie when I get home. <laughs> All right. To get us back <laughs> right. on track, we did have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. We have a second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Thank you, and thank you for telling us about it. Thank we you, and y'all have a Merry Christmas. That was enlightful. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Milford, uh, I just want to offer condolences on the loss of your father. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I dealt with him when I was on the water board, so a good man. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. And services are this Saturday? From services this Saturday at the uh, First United Methodist Church on uh, 311. Uh, visitation is, uh, is in the morning. Yeah, I think it's 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Uh, services will follow after that. Yep, yeah, sorry to hear that, Mr. Mufford. Yeah, thank you. All right. Staff report, discussion, and possible action regarding a change to the 2024 HTRPC meeting schedule and deadlines. What we got, Becky? Um, I mean, we don't, we don't need to. It's just we're changing. Um, in the bylaws, we have to have meetings every. In the bylaws, it states we have to have meetings every third Thursday of the month. So it's not something that you usually have to approve because it's in the bylaws, but we will be changing the February meeting to the fourth Thursday due to it being Mardi Gras all week and Chris being out all week. Okay. So we do need to approve Thanks, the Chris. change from the third Thursday to the fourth Thursday in February. I'll get my fix. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's right. Do yes. We, so we need a motion right now to approve yes. that change. Yes. Got it. All right. I need a motion. I'll move to uh, change the date of the February uh, third Thursday to the February 4th Thursday. It'll be February 22nd. Fourth Thursday, February 22nd. Thank you. Second I, that. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Bogard. All approved, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. So motion passes. And my kids and family, thank you. Yeah. Well, bring us back something. Uh, administrative. <laughs> All right. Administrative approvals, uh, K. I'll move Shh. items K1 through 7. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. I'll second it. I have a second by Mr. Bogart. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank you, Chris. So motion passes. Committee report. No report, sir. Okay. Commissioner comments? Mr. Smith? Well, I got, I got one question, really. Um, so I kind of inadvertently got a phone call from a guy <laughs> about uh, a base. A military base being built in Terrebonne Parish. That would be amazing. That that might be. Uh, um, I do recall Mr. Mert saying at one point, at one presentation, this was a while back, that uh, some of the unmanned aircraft are decommissioned military aircraft. Now, whether or not that's it's still better. the case, I think it's better. Oh, the military base was for the Space Force. Oh. I have no knowledge of that. I, not that I'm aware. Uh, I just, would y'all tell us? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> might be sworn to secrecy. <laughs> All right. Reading y'all faces, see if y'all look left means y'all not telling the truth. Uh -huh. 
And yeah. uh, the other thing was, I'm seeing more and more people walking on major thoroughfares where we have no sidewalks. We have to become more uh, pedestrian friendly moving forward. Um, it just seems like fewer people are buying cars or can afford cars. Yeah. And watching people walk in places where the speed limit is like 55, we we have no no barrier for safety for those people. Yeah. That's just a comment I have. What's, well, your, what's your thoughts? More like a downtown area versus like an MLK area? Well, not not just MLK. Like um, how we just got the, um, the sidewalks in gray mm-hmm. going north from HL. Now I'm watching kids cross over MLK and they're walking down tunnel. Mm-hmm. So they're coming from Terrebonne, Humber Junior High. We have all these apartment complexes on MLK. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere. There's no crosswalks. There's no sidewalks. True. And it's they're just barreling down the road. So if a kid steps out there, God bless them. Well, not only yeah, that, in, in those areas too, it's not highly lighted areas on top of that. So if it's yeah. if it's dark, it's even 10 times worse. Especially right now, yeah. 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 So, so this comment or response is for you guys, but for anyone watching at home. So, uh, right now our MPO, which is South Central Planning, they have um, open a public survey where you can go on and online, and it's really easy to do it on your phone. Actually, actually, it's easier to do it on your phone, and you can uh, place comments about. It's, it's our master transportation plan, uh, which includes our pedestrian and bicycle safety. So you can pick different areas and you can comment on that and you can drag in icons to certain areas. Like if you think there's a stretch of road that has pedestrian issues, like no sidewalks, you click the you know p- pedestrian icon, drag it to a spot on the map. And then you just type in need sidewalks or gotcha. something to that effect, right? Um, but at the same time, so that survey's out there and they're collecting that input. But, you know, we do have MPO meetings that are held. I mean, depending upon which committee or which meeting you're going to, they're pretty much almost every month. Um, but, you know, that's something that we can take back to them. But I would certainly encourage all of you to attend. I know I've seen Mr. Wayne. I know I've seen Robbie and, and several others at those meetings um, and that they're held. Well, sometimes they're at South Central Planning's office. Sometimes they're at the north branch of the library, but we can get that schedule of meetings out. But I Please. think it'd be excellent for y'all to attend because they, they need to hear it from you guys. I mean, Joan, Brooke, BJ and I, we're there all the time. But gotcha. to have a, a planning commissioner show up at that meeting and, and state that, I think would carry a, go a long way, yeah, and they're yeah. and they're always looking for new projects. I mean, we have the new safe routes for all. It's not safe routes to school. Safe routes to school became safe routes to public places became safe routes for all. So that program has evolved and it's been broadened. So, yeah, I think it's a that's how those sidewalks on Highway Twenty Four were put in. Really? So there's a certain yeah. Budget. I think February might be the. I'm sorry, it might be the deadline for the 2024 round of applications. So, you know, we could get you the information and, and you guys, the, yeah, yeah, we'll send it around. With us? Absolutely. Is, is it a certain budget, what you're talking about? Is it a certain budget every year that they can- 500,000, I think, yeah. is the project max. But, um, I mean, I don't know what the MPO has, gotcha. but there's usually a public match requirement with it. But, I mean, we oftentimes combine that with other funds too, so. Okay. Mr. Smith, you good? No, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Bogart. Yes. Uh, where does the planning and zoning uh, stand as far as the, the topic of where we stand on the flood map? Because this is a situation that I, I feel uh, is we we do our due diligence to improve our parish, but if if we don't have anybody left here because they can't afford to live here, then I I think that this levee situation and flood map uh, is the most important thing we need to try to resolve so we can keep people here. So the planning and zoning department, of course, you know, we have a new administration coming in. So, you know, I'm talking with Jason all the time about this and other, other topics, but as it pertains to the flood maps, there are two issues, you know, that we're dealing with. There's the flood maps, 
and there's the flood insurance rates. So with respect to the flood insurance rates, there's litigation ongoing that the state of Louisiana and nine other states are involved in. And uh, although we haven't received the formal uh, ruling from the judge from the September 14th hearing, uh, it's looking like things are starting to move into our favor, but we haven't heard anything formal. It's kind of, I guess, conjecture on the AG's office at this point. But um, as, as it goes back to the, the maps themselves, so before the September 7th adoption date, you know, Gordy had asked us to get involved with Aptum, which is the consulting firm that helped us through the entire uh, LAMP process, which is the levy analysis and mapping where we started feeding FEMA information about all of the work we've been doing parish-wide um, about our levees and drainage systems. But the problem with the maps was FEMA cut us off in July of 2019. So we brought in Aptum to basically help us. We're in the process of putting together our own community flood maps. It's called a CLOMER, Community Letter of Map Revision. So uh, we, Aptum, since August, has, has been working on that, getting data. First, they did a review, a detailed review and analysis of the maps themselves. They identified not only, yes, you know, FEMA has not included these things, but they found some other spots that we need to focus on so we've picked two panels to use as like a beta test so now aptum is getting information from all of the levy districts and the parish and so forth and they were going to put together a computer model for those two panels and we're meeting with fema in the latter part of february we're going to go to fema whether it's denton texas or washington dc we're not 100 percent sure yet but we're going to go there and meet with them in person to explain our strategy about how we're handling this clomer. And then we're going to move forward with them. Um, and it's about a 12 to 18 month process. So we're hoping that by the end of next year, end of 2024 or early part of 2025, we may have new flood maps that Terrebonne Parish prepared that are as accurate and up to date as possible. But I mean, when FEMA did those, they're doing them at a certain scale, right, of, of detail. So whenever somebody's right on the line, if they want to adjust it and they think, oh, do you think it's worth me going to get a loamer? We'll take a look at it, and we can't tell them for sure if they're going to get it or not. But we say, okay, well, you might stand a good chance. I know of people along Val High, say, for example, along – in Summerfield subdivision, Sleeka just bought a bunch of property across from Bayou Country Sports Park entrance off of Val High that was in a flood zone in the new maps. They did a, a loamer on their own. It's outside because they were able to zoom in and really look at that property at that scale, not 20,000 foot level. And there have been people in Summerfield who've been able to do the same. And, and a loamer, as I understand, I mean, you know, you got to get a surveyor to do the 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 site shoots and things like that for you but it's not terribly expensive it's certainly cheaper than the flood insurance rates that i'm seeing so um it may be worth it for some people and i would encourage anybody who's considering it to contact the permit office at 8736567 and ask to speak to one of our floodplain managers to talk about it because they can give them some guidance but we're working on getting new maps and uh, so far, things are looking pretty good. I mean, Derek, I Derek and I are on those calls um, monthly. monthly. We, every wow. every week, we get an update. Reports, yeah. Yep, and biweekly reports. But I mean, the the documents are real time. So every time they update something, we're seeing it. And Jason and his new uh, administration, our new uh, chief administrative officer Noah Lee Rett, um, uh, 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 Ryan Page. Um, they're all watching this closely with us too. Yeah, Michelle Neal, new parish attorney. So, um, perfect. It's you good, moving Mr. along. I'm good. Thank Very you for encouraging. explaining that. Very encouraging. Mr. Thibodeau. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm not necessarily a guy that likes to toot my own horn, but 
doing my councilmatic tenure from 1996 to 2006. The sidewalks you see from Lafayette Street going west where it connects to the tunnel shoulder, the sidewalks from Mobile Estate all the way up to the city of Thibodeau city limits, they were all done under my instigation and with the help of South Central Planning and through the state transportation enhancement grant. So that's why that's how we got yeah. money to do all of those sidewalks. And I, I don't know if those grants are still available. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, you know that is a way for for the councilmen and and concerned persons to maybe uh, get with South Central Planning and and get them to file those grant applications for them. And perhaps we could. That is one way. You know, we did get some budgeted money from the parish to do it, but. The, those were my plans instigated by me. There's only one part of that was not fulfilled and that sidewalks from uh, intersection of 24 North to Lost Bayou on, on Highway 316. So that is still a very dangerous pedestrian uh, path. There's a lot of pedestrian activity there, but I don't know what to hold up with the sidewalks there. So we had talked to you about it briefly, but I've never gotten an update on it. That's under design. Ma'am? Very good. Good to hear that. I'll let the people know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. McGuire. Chris, I'll just. Yes, sir. Would there be any waivers as far as that those fees for individuals having to pay for, let's say, surveying of their properties? For the Lomer? Yes. For the Lomer. No, sir. That's uh, you know, unfortunately, that's something that. Uh, property owners would have to, that expense they'd have to incur. And I, I'm not sure what the going rate is. I, I'd hate to throw a number out, you know, and, and, and be incorrect, but. Uh, well, it's just the fact of how much, um, how much money is actually being spent by the homeowners these days, just with the flood insurance. So having to come back and then do a survey of, well, I'm not in a flood zone, and my flood rate renewal was $3,600, which was more than my SBA loan balance, so I let my flood insurance go. Paid off the SBA loan, so. Hey, Mr. McGuire, you good? Yes. Actually, I could, Mr. Uh, Bogart. He might. I, can just, I think I can answer one of your questions. I'd like him to go, because it's going to pertain to that. Okay, go ahead. I, uh, and this wouldn't apply to everyone, but I actually was looking into possibly applying for a Lomer and I was told it would be around $500 or so to apply personally for a Lomer because after you get the surveyor and application and everything, you send out to FEMA, about $500 for a resident to do that. Mr. Bogart? Yeah, so uh, just for clarity, uh, uh, my question to Chris uh, the Lomer uh, would be an individual task that you would do, uh, but in due time, uh, y'all are working at on a parish level that would encompass anybody in the parish. Am I correct in saying that? That's correct. Um, but even the level of scale and detail that the parish Clomer will be at may not be at the level of accuracy that an individual could do. So what I'm getting at is there may still be people, even after we're done mm -hmm. with ours, that could benefit from a loamer on their own. So if somebody has the time, like if they're on the gliding scale, that, okay, well, maybe not this year, maybe not the following year, but maybe two or three years from now, um, they might be in a in a spot where they might not be able to afford that flood insurance if maybe they just wait one year or whatever so that give us time to get our clomer together they may find that they're out of the flood zone altogether anyway and then it won't cost them a dime right but if you know if if there's a sale of the property involved or something like that that's on a tighter time frame then then maybe a loamer might be worth it all right thank you all right. Any more commissioner comments? That was some good stuff, guys. And we'll we're gonna go ahead and send you all the link to that survey I was talking about. So yep. all right. schedule for the MPO meeting. Yes, sir. Yep. 
Okay, no more commissioner comments. Uh, public comments, no one to give one of those. Need a motion to adjourn. Oh, I have a motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Hey, Becky. Yep. Everyone. Sorry, Merry Christmas. I may be back next month. <laughs> Hey, did we get checks this week? Yeah, she got it. Yep. Can you? Is that on the link? Yeah, Becky. Thank you. Because I hadn't seen it. That uh, Ross and Cradion. Yeah, I need the link. on I hadn't seen it. Wayne, you didn't. You didn't do your sexual harassment. Do we get paid? We've been on the. We've been on the epic site because I was looking. Check not the yeah, sexual harassment. Let me see. I sent you the link on an email to get through it. It's on YouTube. Could you send it again? Of course I can. I don't know. I need the link. Hey, Robbie, you handing out those checks or what, man? Trying to keep that guy's money for yourself? Uh, haircut. I'm falling behind. <laughs> Trying to make up my money. I actually, you uh, I, think, I think Becky got Mr. Clarence, in, the, in the Clarence. envelope. I think. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Look, I got him right here for y'all. Mr. Thibodeau. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah, right. I got it. Okay, you're going to use I do too. <laughs> huh? Is that the stuff now? No. Well, we're gonna meet. That's your card. Oh wait. Yeah. You can let me know when you want to do that, and then I can come and meet you. Not as the service. No, no, maybe you can come. Hey. Here. 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 Here.